What we're going to talk about now is eliminating process waste. And now I'm really going to give out some of my secrets as a consultant. Not really secrets, but just my strategy. So when I get brought in as a lean consultant, the first thing that I do if I really want to help a company, which I always do, improve their productivity or reduce cost is I go to where the work happens. I go to where the employees are adding value. That is transforming a product or service in a way that a customer will purchase it. So I start there. I look at the people, what are they doing? And how could we make their job easier? I learned this from Mr. Shingo himself when I was a part of a tour and I did some gimbal walks with him and he would stand there in a circle basically and ask, and just observe and ask a few questions like, how do I make this person's job easier? That was it. He would just think on that for 30 minutes, 45 minutes without saying a word, just trying to understand the process. But his whole thinking, his whole mindset is how do I make people's jobs easier as I'm observing this process? So with that, I learned and I tried that out and I became very successful with uh, results of productivity. What he told me was when you make someone's job easier, not only does that improve morale, it improves quality, product productivity, safety, and it just makes the person happier. And why not make it easier on the people? Okay, so as we're eliminating waste, what we look for is to specifically, not all eight of the waste are, I mean, eight is overwhelming. So we're just gonna look at four. I go and I look at motion waste to make people's job easier. Uh, if they're over processing, if they're doing more than they have to, if they're working harder, not smarter. Things like quality errors, because if a process is too complex, how can we simplify it, make it easier for them? And that's why the quality errors are happening. We don't blame a person, we look at the process first. And then we make sure if people's skills are, are being utilized properly. That means that if they're doing a job that is very monotonous, maybe we could, that's where we automate it and we could look at using their brain a little bit more or get their thoughts, get them thinking. Okay. So just to clarify what waste is, waste is any activity that consumes resources but creates little or no value for the customer. So it's unnecessary cost to the company. So what is value? Value is activity in the business that the customer is willing to pay for, that transforms the product or service that your organization is working on, and that is done right the first time. So good quality. So let's focus on the four types of waste, because this is what we do in the used soils phase when we get to the E of use for used soils is eliminate waste. So specifically, it's not all the eight waste right away, because we'll look at the things that are impacted by transportation and inventory waste later on. Right now it's all about the people and the process that they work within. So cycle time, which will help improve lead time. That's what we're focusing on here. How do we make it easier, simpler, and really decrease cycle time of a process? So first we look at motion waste. Is there unnecessary reaching, bending, twisting, is the work cell they're working in, the layout, this applies to an office, this applies to a manufacturing area. Just are they walking more than they have to? And I've heard things before like, oh, well, I like something spaced way out over there because it lets me exercise during work. So my response is always, well, on your break, how about you walk? Or, you know, I'll even give you an extra break so you could walk. But during our cycles, we have to make sure that things are efficient and easy for all employees. All right. After we look at motion waste, we look at the way out of things, uh, the way it's structured. I'll look at, can I move things closer together? I want to connect processes. And here's an example of some motion waste that I noticed while going on a tour. I noticed that an employee had to bend down to pick up these large rolls of, there were plastic. Um, and just like, man, if I don't want to do that job all day, I wouldn't want someone else to have to do that job all day. So that just doesn't look very fun. So what I did was I showed the person this, it was, this is a video snapshot, but I showed them the video. I said, hey, look at your back. That's not very fun. He's like, oh no, I, you know, it doesn't bother me. I said, yeah, but over time it, it might, or maybe it doesn't bother you, but maybe the person who has to do this on second shift, it's gonna start bothering them. So that got, that got his attention. So we brought maintenance over. And we asked them questions like, what could we do to make this job easier? Look at 
uh, what the employees have to do, how they have to bend over. So together we came up with, called it a tree. That way it is something more at a level where you don't have to bend, it's on rollers. So the employees loved it, made it a lot easier on them. All right, the second one, second way to focus is on is over-processing. Are employees doing more work than they have to? Um, this Starbucks example is they are printing ink on something that does not show to the customers. So that's over-processing, um, doing more work than they need to. But are we doing a second, third, fourth QC check just in case? Are we having, um, you know, and if that's the case, why, what's wrong with our process? Why we can't only do two QC checks? Why do we have to do three? All right, let's, let's focus on that. How do we make it easy where we don't make mistakes? And our employees going back and forth, traveling too much, just doing too much work, and that works not adding value. It's not transforming the product or service that we're selling to customers. Okay, the third one is defects, poor quality. Um, the most efficient way to do something is to do it once and not twice. So speed is not always the, the main objective. It's you don't wanna quickly do something wrong. You wanna do something right the first time. So we look at the system, making sure it's easy, that, it, that we build quality into our processes and into our systems. So if there's an issue with a lot of quality, we wanna look at the system first and the process, not just blame the person. Okay, the fourth one, uh, waste that we wanna eliminate is skills not being utilized. So people's talents, we wanna make sure that we're empowering people to have a voice, maybe they have a continuous improvement idea, they have an idea to eliminate waste. So we wanna make sure that we give people a voice, but also coach them and talk to them daily and to see how they wanna grow and improve in the business. Okay. So real quick, we're gonna talk about the categories of work, and this is to really help you identify what's adding value and what is not. So it's fun because this is, this is a, a nice piece to have some conflict with when I talk to different departments, but it's always good positive conflict. So here's the three uh, categories of work. So one is value added work. You're either adding value or you're not. The second one is non-value added. That's a waste. The third one is, it's necessary to do, but it's still not adding value. So a quality check, sorry for my quality people out there, right? It, it may be necessary, but it doesn't add value because customers don't pay for the amount of quality checks. They just pay for a good quality product. And if we can't get that done right the first time, then that's on us. We shouldn't need QC checks, but normally they are necessary. Okay, so value added. So an example is a bolt actually being tightened when you're producing a product, that's adding value, that's transforming a product. Um, paint being applied, that's adding value. All these things are adding val value. Putting a cap on a bottle, uh, following the standardized work that was developed, those are things that add value. What's non-value added are the other things, the eight waste, um, ergonomics, the searching for something, waiting on something, having to do rework. None of this adds value to the, to the customer. Excess bending, having long travel times with a poor design or layout, uh, having to rearrange things, working ahead of time, making things just in case instead of just in time. Those are all non-value added. Okay, so things that are necessary but not non-value added are walking. Right? You may have to walk somewhere to, to grab something. It's necessary because what you, else are you gonna do? Uh, fly over there, maybe? Or you could have parts delivered to you so you could help eliminate walking. Um, to throw something away, to check a work order, all those things might be necessary to get an approval or review, but they still don't add value to the customer. So we wanna minimize those. So here's what we do to the three categories of work. The things in red, those eight waste, we wanna eliminate those, make them disappear 100% so they don't happen. The items in yellow, kind of the necessary but non-value added, we wanna reduce those. Maybe impossible to totally eliminate them, but let's focus on reducing those. The green, the value added, that's what we wanna focus on. We should increase the amount of value added time, whether it's OEE or operational availability, it's a good way to measure it to see how much time are we spending adding value versus not adding value. So that's where to get started with eliminating waste. 
make things easier on your employees, create stability, and just ultimately engage and empower your employees to share ideas to help eliminate waste.